let's move on to some topics. Awesome. Oh, the first topic we're going to talk about is collectible card games versus living uh, air quotes, or if you're watching the video yeah. quotes, <laughs> Uh, expandable card games. And the reason I say expandable, except uh, expandable instead of living is because living card games are specific to fantasy flight games. And they might send me a cease and desist. If I continue to call (laughs) them, uh, like they have other companies anyway. So CCGs versus living expandable card games. I'm not going to live that joke down. It's awesome. I like to cough (laughs) in the mic anyway. Um, yeah, this is a love hate relationship. What do you think? Um, Exactly what you said. I mean, it's I've I've uh, delved into both aspects of this. Uh, they both got their pros and cons. I mean, your your collectible card game. Um, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's a rushy feel. I'm gonna buy a box and just start cracking packs and <laughs> oh look at this rare I got or oh I needed this to finish flush out my deck or you know something like that. Which the funny thing about that is it's like the biggest flaw. But it's also the coolest yes. thing. Yes. No, and exactly. It's it's such like a gambling, a kind of like addiction yeah. kind of thing. We just went to the boats. Yeah. It, 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 you just see these dudes buying boxes and boxes and just cracking packs and getting excited over what they pull out. And that's that's part of the rush and appeal to the game in that sense. Um, I mean, if I was going to do a collectible card game today, I would probably just take a more calculated approach, try and figure out what I think I might want to play, just buy it, and that's a lot more economical most of the time, as long as you're not buying like $60, $50 cards and you need a set of them or something, but... Right, yeah. For those who aren't familiar with expandable card games, they're games like Netrunner, or um... (laughs) Tell me some other ones. Uh, The The Warhammer Invasion, uh, The Call of Cthulhu. um, Oh, yeah, and uh, Game of Thrones. I'm assuming is Doomtown... Doomtown's considered that's, that's expandable, because right? It's but not, it, it's it's <clears throat> same realm though, is what I'm saying. Yeah, so. e- easiest way to define it: collectible card games. You buy a booster pack that has randomly inserted cards of rarities. Uh, expandable or living card games. You buy a pack that has like 60, 70 cards, whatever, and it comes with the copies you need to play the game. Exactly, and everybody gets the exact same copies. You know what's in the pack. There you is know no what you're randomness. Getting. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so, for me, I feel like there's more negatives to collectible card games, and I almost feel like the only reason they're around anymore is because the casual player is unaware of how detrimental it is to people, like, to players in the game. Because you always have those rarities, you have those chase rares, you have all that stuff. It becomes a money game at that point. Yeah. The game is built around rarities, rare cards perform better than uncommon cards they perform better than common cards and what are you going to get the most of commons right right stuff like magic you can go and play against a player that has a three to four hundred dollar deck and you're going to lose if you bring a starter Mm -hmm. and so the cards are not balanced in that manner they're balanced against the rarity that it is right and like for the casual player they they're okay with that but i don't think they just know you know, I I say casual player, but then I ma- mentioned magic. Right. Magic's probably not as big. I mean, there's a lot of dedicated folk in that. Right. And but there's a lot of casual games out there like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and things like that. Parents are just buying their kids boosters and packs and boxes of cards and it's like think about it this way. You could buy everything you want in Warhammer Invasion for like $300. Right. Maybe more than that. But you know what I'm saying? That's is a booster box for one set of cards in a collectible card game. Right. And, and, you know, uh, same thing with, uh, like I said, if I'm going to build a deck with a collectible card game, I'll scan, peruse, eBay, card, card, uh, dealer online or whatever you know and just get singles get singles or um you can you can go the same route with the the expandable card games and it's still not going to be probably nearly as costly but you can sit there and kind of be like okay this pack has uh, you know i want to build this deck this pack has them this pack has them this pack has them you you might kind of get more cards than what you need but is that bad (laughs) well right And, and the other thing it's easier to keep up with living card games anyway right or expandable card games because they release a pack like a month, maybe every two months. Yeah. I think it's roughly a month. Yeah. So you can collect them as they come out mm-hmm. if you really want to, because usually they are, they're pretty intelligent with it and there's always something you want in a pack. Right. 
it's not like they come out with a pack for this faction. And you're like, well, I don't play that faction. No, exactly. Every every faction they tend to have, there's always something for each one. Yeah. They they might lean a little heavier on one or two in a pack, but then the next pack after that will pick up the pace on the other ones they left out. Right. If they got six factions, they're going to come out with six booster or expandable decks of cards, and then each one probably focuses on one of those factions more right. so than the rest. And the other thing is, with living card games, unlike, I mean, they've kind of started to, to do that a little bit, but you're less likely to start phasing out old sets. And right. that's the other problem with collectible card games. You dump tons of money into it, and then a year later, all that stuff you just bought can't be played in tournaments. Right. Rotates out. If you're playing casually, that's not a big deal, but I feel like casual card games anymore, collectible card games are kind of a joke. Because unless you're constantly changing out your deck, if you're playing against the same people, it's the same thing. Right. I know you're going to beat me because yeah. your deck is better than mine. Exactly. Or, you know, it's always this crap, too. Like, I bring a deck and it's like, oh, I lost. Next time we get together, oh, you're not going to beat this one. Well, I know I'm not because you know it's in my deck and you just built everything to meta against it. Exactly. So, okay, we'll try this out. Oh, oh, you won. I'm surprised. You bought the cards that would, you know, pretty much crush me. So yeah, it, it just I don't know. I feel like there's t- there's more negatives for collectible card games than there are for living card games because, like I said, that rarity thing. There are no rarities in. I mean, maybe there is, but it's mostly because they limit how many that you can include in your deck that way. Right. And the card is still balanced. Like common cards in living card games and expandable card games are still worth it. Right. Now, some you know commons and stuff in other card games are, but I think percentage-wise, it's larger mm-hmm. in expandable card games. Uh, one thing, though, I do enjoy about collector card yeah. games is uh, drafting and sealed. I mean, those that, those formats are fun. Not so much sealed. It, sealed is more based on uh, bomb rares, who you know, and just yeah. building around it. But drafting is a lot of fun. I do like drafting. Uh, you know, I totally forgot about that in. I'm actually glad that you remembered and brought it up because, man, sealed deck tournaments and stuff, or, you know, like you said, drafting. Mm -hmm. um, For those of you who are not familiar with how drafting goes in CCGs, you basically get like, you know, at least in three packs. Yeah, you get like three packs. You pick a card, pass it to your left. You keep doing it. That pack's done. You open the next pack, pass it to your right. Same thing. Once you have your 45 cards or whatever it is, then Mm -hmm. you fill up the rest with like basic resources, you know, stuff like that. So, man, it, that is really fun. Mm-hmm. Now, some of the living card games, depending on the card game, actually have that too. It's not as fun. Because you know what's in there. Right. You kind of know already what you need to pick each each draft or right. whatever, as long as the other players kind of don't go that route. So. Right. But yeah, yeah, okay. There's, there's a really good benefit to uh, CCGs. Actually, playing it like that is, is so much better. It's expensive, but playing it like that is so much better than playing uh, like for me, it's so much better to play a draft than it is to actually play the card game. Well, I mean, I don't have any magic cards, but if I go to Gen Con or my local game shop, I mean, I might not do good because I don't have the knowledge of the the, sets the whole and stuff. set and everything, but I could do somewhat decent and probably not get thrashed. We should do that, Gen have Con. A, yeah, have a standing chance, I think, <clears throat> you know, uh, if you just sit down and draft. and Yeah, and there's only two ways to draft. For money... Or to win. Yeah. Uh, and it's always the first pot. Oh, you guys What's are passing. That rare? Why are you passing all the rares? I'll take it. It <laughs> has nothing to do with any of these other cards yeah, I've been doing. I guess I'm losing this tournament. Yeah, I'm glad you guys are pl- <laughs> uh, playing to win because <laughs> I'm playing to play, uh, playing to put these on eBay. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. And I think it's easier to probably get people into LCGs because with collectible card games you almost have to commit yeah i mean you have to commit either way it's not as overwhelming with a lcg you could jump in halfway and be okay right and i feel like that's why they started well it probably is why they started doing the whole block formats and things like that Mm -hmm. because newer players can jump in and it's like well as long as you just buy the card from this year you're fine right don't go off and buy two years three years ago Mm -hmm. so but i don't know i if I had to pick, which I have, I, I mean, I have tons of card games, though. I've, I don't know, 30 card games. I've got these little boxes that hold like 2,500 cards each, and I have 22 of them of different games. So I've played tons of CCGs, 
But as I started playing board games and started finding out the expandable games and stuff, I would probably lean more towards that only because I wouldn't be dedicated into it. It's almost like a hobby. Right. You have to be into CCGs to stay and, you know, do good. So. And most of your uh, expandable card games tend to have a theme you can be happy with. Uh, that That's why I liked Warhammer Invasion. I mean, it's, I like yeah. the theme of it. Some people play the, well, Cthulhu's not around either. But they killed that off. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Time to start collecting it. Yeah, so it, it uh, y- if you were really into Cthulhu and wanted to play it, and a lot, a lot I think what didn't draw me into uh, Netrunner was just I'm not big into science fiction. So I was kind of like, eh. it's so good. I don't, and trust me, I know I've heard it from everybody, but it's just <laughs> I'm not the biggest science fiction fan. So it's kind of like, eh. That was a huge shadow run player so that's probably and it looks similar right you yeah. know it's got that same oh, it's, feel it's the same game. yeah exactly so which i love i love shadow run but i think it had enough fantasy in it to to keep me interested on it so yeah 